Hello, wonderful staff of the Northwest Kidney Center, particularly at the flagship unit in Kent, with a shout out this month to our friends in Burien. Today we're going to talk about travel for dialysis patients. We live in a global world and travel for many reasons, uh, whether it's vacation or work or relocation or natural disasters, among others. But regardless of the reason for travel, for our patients who are tethered to dialysis unit, it is important to travel to places where dialysis is available and to make arrangements for dialysis well in advance to the travel. Hopefully this video will be useful to you in answering questions about dialysis patients uh, and their need to travel or their interest in travel and may prompt you to encourage our patients to consider travel in the future. Also, uh, what we discussed today regarding arrangements for travel can also apply to dialysis patients who need to relocate for work or family reasons. There are three objectives to today's talk. I want you to understand the process of arranging dialysis for a traveling patient. Uh, know some common sense advice to share with a dialysis patient who is traveling. And finally, review the benefits of dialysis cruises. Benjamin Franklin once wrote that by failing to prepare, you are preparing to fail. Preparation is important for most aspects of life, <clears throat> but this is particularly true for dialysis patients who are traveling because it is very important to maintain the dialysis schedule during the travel period. There's a lot of work that needs to be done in advance to make this happen. First, advise patients to choose a dialysis-friendly destination. So uh, select a dialysis vacation spot uh, where dialysis is readily available at facilities nearby. Consider a dialysis cruise. Cruises are an excellent vacation option for dialysis patient uh, because they're really convenient with onboard medical facilities. Uh, and we'll talk about this more in a little bit. Um, entertain the concept of a road trip. You know, embarking on a road trip allows you to have more control over your travel schedule, making it easier to accommodate uh, a dialysis schedule. And this is particularly true for uh, patients who are on peritoneal dialysis or home hemodialysis because they can just put the dialysis supplies in the trunk of the car and then, say, do dialysis in a hotel room. It's very important to arrange for dialysis beforehand if going to an in-center dialysis unit. Um, well before embarking on a trip, it's crucial to research dialysis centers at the destination. Um, many urban areas have lots of dialysis facilities equipped to handle travelers, but uh, it takes time to secure a spot there. Most dialysis centers, including the Northwest Kidney Center, welcome travelers on a short-term basis that is less than 30 days. Um, the first step uh, for the patient is to notify his or her, her home dialysis center about travel plans at least a month in advance. Kristen, for example, at our unit in Kent can help find a dialysis unit close to where a patient will be staying. Uh, and we can then make arrangements to secure a spot for the patient during the trip. Uh, the internet is very helpful for finding dialysis units and there are databases of dialysis units around the country provided by the National Kidney Foundation. Um, acceptance to an outside dialysis unit involves compiling and faxing a lot of paperwork. So this is what Kristen needs to arrange uh, before a dialysis patient can get accepted an outpatient unit. Uh, we have to compile a list of demographics and insurance information, uh, travel dates, the address where the patient will be staying during travel, uh, medical records including a current history and physical, recent lab results, an electrocardiogram, a chest x-ray, uh, that's a federal law to screen for active pulmonary tuberculosis. We need current dialysis records, the dialysis prescription, uh, data from the last three to five uh, treatments, uh, and the dialysis access type, and finally, a medication list. So all this needs to be compiled and then faxed to uh, an outside dialysis unit. It's important to make sure that dialysis is covered uh, by insurance prior to travel. So some insurance plans uh, may cover dialysis sessions for an out-of-network facility, while others may not. 
Uh, Medicaid uh, will not cover dialysis uh, across state lines. Uh, and Medicare only pays for 80% of the cost of dialysis. So it's very important to consider this before traveling. It's also good to consider travel insurance. You know, when traveling as a Dallas patient, having travel, travel insurance um, is very important. Um, there are policies that can cover medical emergencies or trip cancellations uh, related to health conditions. Um, and some insurance plans may also offer medical assistance services, uh, which may provide the patient peace of mind. It's very important for a patient to pack wisely. So when packing for a trip, um, it's important to include all necessary supplies, medications, and any special equipment needed for the treatment. Uh, and you want to keep a separate bag for dialysis supplies uh, so that they are readily accessible uh, during travel. Important to carry a sufficient amount of prescription drugs to last the entire vacation, plus a few extra days just in case of unexpected delays. Uh, if traveling by airplane, keep your medication in your carry-on in case your luggage uh, gets lost. It's also a good idea to carry a copy of your medical records and a list of emergency contacts, including your healthcare team's information. Of course, um, maintaining dietary restrictions while traveling can be challenging, especially um, when uh, eating a lot at restaurants and uh, trying new cuisines. Um, but it's very important to adhere to a real diet when traveling. Uh, so specifically, you know, low sodium, low phosphorus, low potassium diet, um, even though uh, that's hard to do when eating food at a restaurant. Ideally, it'd be good to stay at a place with a kitchen so that patients can cook their own food. It's a great idea for a Dallas patient to have a travel companion. So travel with a spouse or other companion you can help during the trip uh, and make sure that travel companion understands the medical needs of the patient. It's important also to note that patients can fly with dialysis equipment. So for example, a peritoneal dialysis machine can come aboard as a carry-on. A home hemodialysis machine is too large and needs to be checked as luggage. Um, that said, airlines are not supposed to charge for taking medical supplies as long as the machine meets the weight and supply limits. Uh, in addition, uh, medical supplies are not supposed to count against your carry-on limit according to FAA rules. And so, um, you know, definitely uh, it's important to bring those on board uh, and not check them in. Um, also, your medical supplies, uh, medical supplies of the patient take priority over other passengers carry on luggage. Of course, it's a good, good idea to have a doctor's note uh, to show to the TSA agents and airline personnel uh, because with proper documentation, um, patient can bring aboard syringes and dialysis fluids and whatever else he or she needs. Consider asking for a wheelchair beforehand. Uh, the advantage is it alerts the airline that you have a medical condition. And also uh, definitely ask for pre-boarding, which will allow uh, the patient plenty of uh, time uh, and room for uh, the machine and supplies to fit in the overhead compartments. Medical professionals also have an important role in facilitating travel arrangements for their patients. Medical professionals must conduct a thorough assessment of the patient's health and treatment requirements before travel. So this includes, uh, for example, reviewing their medical history, um, current dialysis regimen, and potential complications that may occur during travel. It's a good idea for patients to be given a copy of their relevant medical records, including a letter from the nephrologist detailing uh, the treatment regimen, medications, and other pertinent information. And as I mentioned earlier, if traveling by airplane, a letter from the nephrologist requesting permission for the patient to carry on the medications and medical supplies is very important. It's also important for um, medical professionals to you know, shed some understanding um, regarding insurance policies and out of network treatment. So for example, you might need to get pre-authorization from an insurance company so that they will pay for the dialysis out of state and you wanna do that long before the patient actually travels.
Also, it's a good idea to tell the patient that there can be out-of-pocket expenses. So for example, I had a patient who traveled down to California and the insurance covered the cost of dialysis, but not the medications. And they gave him uh, erythropoietin and a vitamin D analog, and those were very expensive for the patient. So it's a good idea for them to understand that uh, medications are often not covered when they travel. Finally, it's very important for the medical professional to convey an, an impression or an understanding of emergency preparedness for the patient. I mean, travel can be unpredictable, uh, emergencies can happen. It's important to help the patient develop a contingency plan, you know, for unexpected situations such as, say, equipment malfunction or changes in treatment availability. It's also good to identify local healthcare facilities that can be used in an emergency if needed. I want to spend a little bit of time focusing on a unique form of travel for dialysis patients in the form of dialysis cruises. Uh, cruises are a great option for dialysis patients because they offer medical and dialysis support for the passengers while they're enjoying their vacation, often in remote places. One of the key advantages of having dialysis facilities on a cruise ship is the convenience it provides. So instead of having to arrange treatments at various ports of call or interrupt travel plans to visit local clinics, passengers can receive dialysis on port, so it's just logistically very easy. Dialysis patients also can have access to remote locations that they otherwise might not be able to visit. Uh, so you can go to destinations that might not have, you know, dialysis clinics nearby, say in the Caribbean or maybe in parts of South America. Um, patients can also explore remote and exotic locations without concerns about access to just general Medicare in, in general. And that's because they also have access to medical staff while traveling. So <clears throat> this is a huge advantage to dialysis patients because of the, the care uh, and expertise provided by the medical staff on a dialysis cruise. So medical personnel on a cruise ship are experienced in administering dialysis treatments. Uh, they are trained to handle emergencies. They can monitor patients closely, provide ongoing care throughout the duration of the cruise. And this uh, provides everyone a lot of peace of mind. Um, additionally, if you have a cruise that's meant for dialysis patients, the kitchen is aware of their dietary restrictions and limitations, and so uh, they can be uh, uh, supported nutritionally with a, a renal diet, which is uh, it's hard to do on a conventional cruise ship. Several cruise lines have recognized the importance of providing dialysis facilities for their passengers with medical needs. Uh, they include Royal Caribbean International, um, Celebrity Cruises, Carnival Cruise Line, and Norwegian Cruise Line. Um, it's important to note that the availability of dialysis facilities may vary by ship and itinerary, so basically you have to check with the cruise line directly when planning your trip. Um, also, uh, you really want to book well in advance to secure a spot uh, in one of these dialysis cruise ships because space is often limited. You can do peritoneal dialysis on cruise ships with the permission of the cruise line. Um, logistically, it makes sense to arrive uh, at the port a day early, stay at a hotel where you can have your supplies shipped, say from Baxter, and that would include things like the dialysate, the cassettes, um, you know, gauze sponge, antiseptics, disinfectants, gloves, whatever you need to do the peritoneal dialysis. You can pick them up yourself and then you can deliver them to the dialysis cruise with plenty of time to um, uh, to board the ship. Um, traveling with peritoneal dialysis is often easier because there's no need for a standard dialysis unit, but it is still a good idea to um, have a backup medical plan just in case there is a problem like you get peritonitis or there's some technical problem with the peritoneal dialysis. Uh, you can certainly bring your cycler on board uh, and uh, they even have smaller cyclers which are a little bit easier to carry on airplanes and, and use in uh, smaller places. With permission of the cruise line, it's also possible to bring a home hemodialysis machine on the cruise ship. Um, as with uh, perineal dialysis, it's very important to have a backup dialysis plan in the event of a technical problem.
The cost of dialysis on a cruise ship can vary depending on the cruise line, uh, the ship, the duration of the cruise, for example. Um, the majority of mainstream American cruise lines charge about $800 per treatment. Uh, and that probably would not include medications such as erythropoietin or vitamin D. Uh, it is crucial uh, to inquire about the pricing structure uh, and whether or not the cost is included in the overall cruise fare or if there are additional charges for dialysis treatments. Um, in some cases, the cost of dialysis on a cruise ship may be covered by insurance. Um, obviously, you have to contact their insurance provider to inquire uh, about coverage for dialysis treatments on a cruise. Uh, Medicare and Medicaid will not cover the cost of dialysis on a cruise. So again, some private insurance plans may consider dialysis on a cruise ship as an out-of-network service, uh, or you may have specific requirements for coverage, but some will pay a portion of the bill. Um, if your insurance does not provide coverage for dialysis on a cruise ship, uh, there are some other funding options. Uh, some patients may qualify, say, for a financial assistance program or grants specifically designed to help uh, people with uh, kidney failure cover the cost of dialysis treatments while traveling. Um, additionally, it's important to consider any additional expenses that may be occurred during the cruise, such as medications, medication supplies, or special dietary needs. Okay, let's summarize what we've learned. Preparation is very important uh, prior to travel for a dialysis patient. It takes a lot of time, a lot of paperwork, a lot of work on the part of the unit secretary to make all this happen. Important to choose destinations where dialysis centers are nearby and convenient for the patient. Um, make sure the receiving dialysis unit accepts the patient's insurance. You have to get insurance authorization prior to travel. And that's one of the reasons why we like to um, have at least a month in order to arrange for a dialysis patient to uh, travel. Dialysis patient needs to pack wisely, and specifically it means carry on their medications, copy of medical records, uh, and if they're a home dialysis patient, either peritoneal dialysis or home hemodialysis, uh, to carry uh, a lot of their equipment on the airplane uh, with a note from the physician that, that authorizes uh, them to do that. Um, patient uh, needs to be reminded to continue to follow a renal diet, so low sodium, low phosphorus, low potassium while traveling. This, of course, can be difficult to do uh, if, uh, say, you're eating at a lot of restaurants. Uh, it's a really good idea to travel with support so a companion who understands your medical problems. Medical equipment can be brought on airplanes for free, um, so, then there sh so there should be no charge for um, you know, having an extra carry-on or two or three for uh, peritoneal dialysis or home hemodialysis. Dialysis cruises are a wonderful option for dialysis patients because they offer medical facilities and dialysis support, uh, which pass passengers can receive while enjoying their vacation, often in remote places. Um, the major downside is cost. So Medicare and Medicaid will not cover the cost of dialysis on cruises. All right, folks, break yourself for a challenging quiz. Question number one, does insurance cover the cost of dialysis at outside dialysis units? Well, now that I read this question, it's not a good one because the answer is maybe. Um, recall that uh, Medicaid is state specific and will not cover dialysis outside of Washington state. Uh, so for example, if a patient has only Medicaid insurance but not Medicare, uh, then they cannot travel outside of state. Medicare pays for dialysis, but only 80% of it. Um, and so, and oftentimes you need to get permission from their secondary insurance, that's called a prior authorization. So if they have a supplemental insurance, you have to get permission before they go to an outside dialysis unit, otherwise they'll have to eat those costs. Question number two, does insurance cover the cost of dialysis on a cruise ship? The answer is usually not. 
so each treatment costs up to about 800 bucks on a cruise ship. Uh, Medicaid and Medicare do not cover dialysis on the cruise ship. Um, some private insurances may cover a part of the cost. So that's that's a major problem with dialysis cruise. Very very expensive. Question number three: Can patients bring medical supplies on an airplane for free? The answer is yes, with the doctor's note. And so I've had lots of patients say who are home hemo patients or peritoneal dialysis patients who will bring their supplies on the airplane with them. Um, and they can check those all in and, or they can bring them in as carry-ons for free. So there's no charge to that. They will, however, need a doctor's note. Question number four, name three advantages of a dialysis cruise. You got it. Number one allows dialysis patients to travel to remote locations that uh, they otherwise might not be able to ever get to. Provides dialysis patients with access to medical personnel while traveling. That gives everyone peace of mind. And it's easy to plan. So there's no need to worry about dialysis arrangements or getting off the ship and going to a dialysis facility at some port. Final question. Can you do home hemodialysis and peritoneal dialysis on a cruise ship? The answer is yes, uh, but of course you need to contact the cruise line first and get permission uh, from the cruise ship beforehand. And, and of course it requires making sure that you have all your supplies with you and just kind of make, uh, handling all the logistics associated with getting those supplies uh, to the port and then from the port onto the ship, uh, etc. This concludes the October 2024 in service for the Northwest Kidney Center. Thank you for watching. Uh, thank you for taking such wonderful care of our patients. This is Andy Brokenbro signing out until next month. Take care.